I think of myself as a pretty experimental person. I like to get out of my comfort zone and try new things. I'm a Gemini, for those of you that care. And I've always felt that I have too many interests to keep track of. When thinking about what job I was going to have in the future, I remember liking the idea of being a filmmaker because it meant I could study a certain lifestyle, culture, city, whatever for any given project. It felt like a practical way to be consistently inconsistent. There are a few things that I've done lately to sort of get out of my bubble. I'm going to focus on two of them in this video. The first is obviously my beard. So, you know, chin strap, new look. Whatever. There it is. For better or for worse. There it is. Um, the other is uh, a little less noticeable, a little less, a little more subtle, right? It's not on me, so you can't see it. But it's uh, it's still something that sort of made me think in a new way and made me approach something in a different sort of way that I like never really thought about it. First and foremost, let's talk about the beard. So the history of this beard, of what was this beard, the beard that you guys know and have uh, come to love and, and seen in other videos, was that back in high school, I wasn't allowed to have a beard. Um, I had to shave pretty much. I went to a Catholic school, so pretty much, if you've ever been to Catholic school, you know that. More likely than not, um, at least in my experience, you weren't allowed to shave. I mean, you, you had to shave, you weren't allowed to have a beard. So come college time, I immediately jumped on to the beard train beard gang, beard, beard everything. I pretty much took that opportunity to go ahead and create this new look for myself through facial hair. And it may sound super simplistic or a little funny or whatever, but the reality of the situation is that it was a difference and it was a change because it wasn't something that I had or had had for 18 years of my life. A lot of people told me to shave it, they told me I looked dumb, they told me I looked like a bum, they told me to just get rid of it. And some were joking, some were serious, um, but most importantly, I didn't care. And I don't say that to be rude to anyone who sort of like put in their input, but simply, you know, I wanted to have it, I wanted to give it a try, I wanted to see where it took me, so to speak, you know? I just wanted to change it up. And I wanted to look different than the past 18 years of my life. So I went ahead and went for it. And a lot of those comments were there and a lot of them, you know, were jokes and, and, and like I already said, weren't super serious. But at the same time, those are little things, little factors that when you're talking about change and the principle of creating a change in your own world, in your own life, in whatever, in like whatever way, the people, the world around you that's used to you being a certain way, looking a certain way, or talking and acting in a certain way, just whatever, are gonna, I mean, ideally, hopefully they support it, but uh, sometimes it's gonna be hard for them, <laughs> difficult for them, and you're gonna get, you know, some pushback. Like, it's just, you know, you're gonna get pushback pretty much is what I'm trying to say. And when it came to my beard, I was like, let's just, you know, let's just dive into this. I'm going all in. It's happening. Don't care what anyone says, it's happening. And thus, the bearded Josue that you know came and has been around for a very, very long time. Pretty much all throughout college, I rocked that beard. Barely went baby face. It like wasn't a thing. And if it was, I like hid myself for a week until I had some fuzz back on there. And then I'd like go out. And I got used to that. And I got really used to that. And I got really set to that. And I had jobs with that. And I had classes with that. And I had social events with that and pictures with that it was it was there it was a thing it was, it was right here and then I changed it up because well really because of my Halloween costume so I was awesome sensei for those of you that are familiar with Naruto and he pretty much has like this chin strap with no mustache 
so no mustache part is probably what got me the most. I don't like the way my face looks without a mustache. I like the mustache in general. I don't think I'd ever rock a mustache by itself, but definitely when I had a chin strap in the past, I made sure to have a chin strap and the mustache. But Saratobi Sensei, also my sensei, doesn't have that, so has to shave it off. After I went ahead and finished wearing that costume and I pretty much took everything off and I was just back to wearing like regular clothes, it didn't look as cool as it did, does, 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 whatever, for Asuma Sensei. So I was like, all right, you know what? It's, it's time to change it up. Got the razor and I'm in the washroom and I got a whole delegation in there. My brother's in there, my sister's in there. Got, you know, my girlfriend's talking to me like over the phone, we're texting back and forth. And this whole like, delegation of people as I'm like venturing off into this new look and it reminded me back of um when I added the beard in the first place when I first started growing it and now we're getting rid of it and we're changing it up and I went with the chin strap the main reason was it was uh from my sister and my brother they said if you get if you try the chin strap if you don't like it with you know within a day or two you can always shave it off if you go completely baby face and you're just starting from zero so I was like, fine, let me at least give the chin strap a try. Let's do that. And if I don't like it, I'll go ahead and I'll shave it. And it's still on my face. So I like it a little. The second thing is a little less obvious. It's more something that I partook, partake, partook. It's more something that I took part in and not something that you sort of like visually see, you know, me rocking or wearing or whatever. That was, uh, I voice acted in an animated short that my cousin made. You can find it on her YouTube channel. I'll link it down below. But pretty much in that animation, I play a main character named Jake. And Jake is not a grown man like I am. He is a teenager. His voice has to sound like a teenager. So my cousin approached me with the synopsis of her short film and how she wanted to do it and how she had me as the idea for Jake's voice because a lot of times she hears me sort of like joking around, messing around, and I guess I do a good squeaky voice for the character. So I was like, sure, whatever, like, let me give this a try. But in that, like, so there were auditions, like we met up to talk about it, and then we went ahead and actually, that was like, like two or three weeks before the actual like shooting for it, not shooting, but um, recording for the animation. Uh, you can tell I'm a video guy. <laughs> um, and in that, I had to just sort of like think about how a teenager, like going into his teenage, like preteen, preteen, I had to sound. So I went ahead and like just started doing random voices and she was there and she was just kind of like laughing at them and, and like nodding and some that she liked. And, and I pretty much just had to like think in a different way and approach words and sentences in a way that I wasn't used to and give it a try. Now I'm not a professional voice over uh, artist. I usually outsource that <laughs> when it comes to projects of mine, when it comes to short films, but I wanted to give this opportunity, you know, it's kind of low risk, kind of fun. I just wanted to give it a chance and see what I could do with it. It brought me back honestly to like my improv days in high school where, where you had to like not judge yourself, you know? And I think that's one of the biggest things is you, sort of jumped into a scene, you jumped into something and you go into it and you know, you're playing this role, you're playing a character and you know, it's your face, it's your image and you're in front of like this crowd and these and these people and, and they're all watching you and, and they're laughing at your laughs or they're laughing just at you, but like you have to sort of be comfortable with all that. And it's been a while since I've sort of been in that role. I haven't been in that position in a while. If that makes sense. So I was really happy to take this opportunity and just give it a try. So I remember we were like recording some of the stuff and you know, like one of the things was like, oh, like I'm finally excited to like go Christmas, like Christmas shopping without my parents. <laughs> and like my voice just like came back in. I was trying to have like this light voice and then it was like, Burr, like just manly voice would like come out, you know, sort of break character. But I, you know, we did like several takes of uh, each line that I had. And you know, she picked the best ones that she thought were the best and she put them in the project. I don't think I did that good of a job personally, but it's still out there. <laughs> um, but I think the, the more fun part for me was channeling something and giving something a try that isn't something I normally do. 
Not sure how long the beard will be kept. No Shave November is a thing, and I'll more likely than not default back to my well-groomed, one-shaven face. But it's nice to have changed it up for a little bit, and keep things fresh. As for acting, well, I'd like to be in more things and try more voice acting whenever the opportunity arises. It really provides a moment to look into a character and compare and contrast the similarities and differences between you and them. So we'll see how that goes. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know how you might be changing things up and stepping outside of your bubble. I hope you enjoyed this video. And once again, my name is Josue, and I have lived in Chicago, the greatest city in the world. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.